Okay. Um, hello everyone. Welcome to the third episode of our sports science series. Um, I hope you all enjoy Kate's talk on Wednesday. If you haven't had the chance to have a look at the past two talks yet, they are both now on YouTube. Um, so just type in GCSC into YouTube and it should be it should come up quite quickly, I think, because they're both new videos. Um, so thank you all for tuning in. Um, today's video will take the same shape as last week, so it will be a um, short presentation from me and then any questions you have I'll answer at the end of the video. Um, feel free to send any questions you have into the email address gcsc at no, gcscquestions at gmail.com. Um, me and Kate both have access to that so we can answer your questions. Um, so tonight's video is motivation through coronavirus. And I'm also going to talk about something called resilience. And I've put these two topics together because I feel like one breeds the other. So resilient people are normally very motivated and motivation normally breeds resilience. So I'm going to put those two together. Um, the motivation part of the video is going to be more specific to the current situation we are experiencing. And then further down the line, there's going to be another motivation talk, which will be more in season specific. So when we're back, hopefully nearing back in the pool and how you can start off with some new fresh goals. Um, so, yeah, any questions, post them in the comments or send them to email address I just says gcscquestions at gmail.com okay so motivation through coronavirus um, <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to talk about is resilience so what is resilience um, it is the ability to recover quickly from difficulties or challenges and bounce back from tough situations. So it's the ability to go through adversity and bounce back and not give up. Um, it can be built up over time during situations that require you to overcome adversity. So right now is actually a really, really great um, time to learn it because we've got a lot of challenging situations that are being thrown our way that we need to try and quickly adapt to. Um, the build-up of these skills and strategies when you deal with these tough situations enables you down the line to become more naturally resilient and they can be learned by anyone. Um, it's something that can be developed and adopted over time and you can work at it and you can practice it and it you, it's not something you're born with. Well, you can be born with it, but it is also something that can be learned. So this is just kind of a more visual way to show you the traits that build up to resilience so I'm going to go through them and then I'm going to talk through them all in a little bit more detail so first we've got positive personality choice not sacrifice focused on own journey adaptable confident and responsible so all of these traits in their own right um, build up to this this resilience, this character trait that just allows you to go through tough times and not give up and see the light at the end of the tunnel. So we're going to go through all of these in a little bit more detail now. So positive personality. So a resilient person will normally understand that setbacks are only temporary. It's likely that what you see as a setback right now isn't going to last forever. We're not going to be stuck in our houses forever. You're going to be able to get back into the pool. You're going to be able to train. So don't get bogged down in the fact that temporarily, yes, now we are not able to do what we want to achieve our goals. But that is okay. Um, a lot of the time, resilient people actively focus on the positives. And this can actually become a habit if we do it consistently enough. If we're always actively seeking the positives, a lot of the time we don't even think about the negatives which is a really great thing to have, especially in a situation like this. And it's really important to practice this as well. Um, a resilient person will approach new challenges and situations with an optimistic and competitive outlook. They don't get stressed or panicked by um, situations that are new or scary. A resilient person 
doesn't wait for things to happen to them. They're proactive and they make things happen for themselves. They're also proud of their strengths and abilities, but also accepting of their weaknesses. They understand that not everyone's perfect. There's always going to be something that they can work on, but they see it as a, a, a learning curve rather than something that they're bad at. Choice, not sacrifice. So resilience involves being in control of your emotions when you're making decisions and taking actions. Um, a resilient person will not let emotion get in the way of their decision making, especially when this emotion is negative. They gain motivation from this because their decisions are then focused on their goals. They know that every decision they make is based around what they want to achieve. Therefore, any extra sessions they do, S and C sessions, run cycles, is because they want to do it and improve. And it's not seen as a chore or something they're being forced to do. So a resilient person is focused on their own journey. They ask themselves daily questions like, okay, so what did I do better today? They try not to waste mental energy on comparing themselves to others. Too often this can lead to stress and the fear of failure. So when you're um, thinking about yourself and you're thinking about your competitors, don't waste mental stress on worrying about what they can do better than you. Just concentrate on your own journey. Aim to focus, your own, uh, focus on your own development. So do what you can with what you have. Right now you'll see on Twitter and social media people who have got pools in their houses they've got loads and loads of weights and they've got their own home gym but it doesn't matter what people have access to do what you can with what you have only you can determine your own rate of progression you can use others to inspire you and motivate you but only in a positive way we can take someone like adam Peaty and we can be inspired by him and and think how amazing he is but it shouldn't be in a way where it's like, oh, I'm never going to be as quick as Adam Peaty or I'm never going to be as strong as him or as focused as him. It should be in a positive way. I want to be as strong as him. I want to be as positive as him. And they ask themselves questions like, did I improve compared to what I did yesterday? This keeps them on track. So, um... In resilience, you need to embrace change. Be flexible with it in order to get the best out of yourself. When something changes, you shouldn't get bogged down in the fact that something has changed. You should work to adapt your aspects of your mindset to match your new routines, such as your expectations of what you can realistically expect from yourself, your attitude, so how am I going to approach this, and of course your motivation, which we'll go through in a little bit. Um... Resilient individuals thrive under a new challenge or abrupt change and they don't panic, they don't get stressed. They have a deep down belief that they can handle it. Responsible. So, taking responsibility for keeping themselves focused. You are in charge of your own mission. You're in charge of whether you stay in track or not. Take ownerships of thoughts, feelings and actions. They are your own. Don't blame others for results and progress. If something doesn't go your way, if you have a bad race, if you something just didn't was a bit off, it should never be, oh, well, the first thing I'm going to do is say, oh, it was my coach's fault. It was my mum's fault. It was my dad's fault. Take ownership for yourself. Be responsible. Take that external blame out of the equation. Make decisions based on your own progress. And the final one, confident and robust. So resilient people find ways to build their confidence stronger. So we talked about last in the last video, drawing on past experiences, using self-talk techniques, focusing on the positives. Don't let negative experiences or situations knock your confidence. Focus on what has been achieved rather than what is left to do. If you know what it is you want to be achieving, don't focus on how far away you are from it. Focus on how far you've come already. And believe that every setback is a setup for a major comeback. Um, 
All of these traits play a part in making someone resilient. It is important for not only situations like this, but also for life in general. Things aren't always going to be easy or go your way, but being able to keep your head up and not give up is something that being an athlete will ultimately teach you to do. If you learn to be more resilient now, you'll set yourself up really well for when things start to challenge you even more. There's always inevitably going to be someone bigger than you, stronger than you, faster than you. They have more racing suits than I do, blah, 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 blah. There's always going to be something that you could put in your way of achieving what you want. But at the end of the day, if you're a resilient person, you've got to push through all these things and just get it done anyway. So the next one we're going to talk about is motivation. So this little bit we're going to go through, I'm going to make a situation as specific as I can so that when we do our motivation talk further down the line, we can focus on what we're going to do when we're back in the pool. So as coaches and athletes, we talk about motivation a lot, but do we really know what it is? Um, by dictionary definition, motivation can be described as a reason or set of reasons that can determine aspects of our behaviour, impacting how we think, feel and interact. So what I take from that in a basic as I can term, it's our get up and go. And it's usually the reason why we want to do something. Um, if you someone came up to you and asked you why you compete and you answer because I want to be the best, that is your get up and go. That is the reason why you turn up to morning training, you go to school, then you come straight back to the pool and you get training again. That is your get up and go. So everyone has do different motivations and there are two different types. So intrinsic motivation is doing something for personal reward or pleasure. And extrinsic motivation is doing something to earn a tactile reward. So this is a medal, a trophy, prize money. Um, you can have both types. You can have just one type. They work hand in hand. So try and figure out what your motivation is. Identifying your own motivation. So obviously we're in a brand new situation and it actually offers a really clean state for setting some quarantine specific goals. Now this doesn't mean we forget our major swimming goals that we set with our coaches at the start of the year. That doesn't mean we ignore those. It just means we have to adapt to be able to think about those goals in a different way. So the first thing we need to do is assess what we have available. What do you have available to you and then decide what it is you want to focus on. For example, I want to improve my running or I want to make progress in my mobility or my flexibility. The second thing we want to do is add in the specifics. So I want to run five kilometres in 25 minutes by the end of quarantine. We've then got to figure out what it is we're going to do to achieve this. What is our strategy? So say if I wanted to run five kilometers in 25 minutes at the end of quarantine I might say to myself okay so to do this I'm going to try and run twice a week but don't forget to link this to your overall goal um, for example if your coach has been telling you for a while that you don't kick your legs enough um, you could then say well this will build muscular endurance in my legs which will improve my kick in the pool so by doing that, we've linked our quarantine goal back to our swimming goal. It has to be something that you really want to achieve. Otherwise, you won't have the get up and go and the drive to do it. Reconnect with your long term swimming goals. Why are you an athlete? What are you looking to achieve once all of this is over? What has your coach been telling you to do for the past however many months? What did I do wrong in my last race? What, what can I improve? Try to always match your goals to how they would make you feel. So if I ran five kilometres in 25 minutes, I would feel proud. I would feel happy. I would feel like I've achieved something great. So I'm now going to go through some practical strategies to help you use your goals to stay motivated during the day. So just a quick overview. Give yourself something to look forward to at the end of every day. So that once you've done... All of the things you set out to do, you've got that to look forward to. Set yourself regular breaks to allow your brain to refocus. It's no good just ploughing through the day as much as you can without actually giving your brain some time to reset. If you do that, you'll get burned out. Try not to get negative or down about your rate of progression. Be patient. 
You might not be able to achieve everything every day. That is absolutely okay. Use this to motivate you for tomorrow. What didn't I get done today that I want to get done tomorrow? Okay, so if there was a point where I was going to set people a challenge to do or some sort of homework task, it would definitely be this one because I find this helps me a lot. And once you start doing it, you'll actually see how much of an impact it has on the way you look at things. So take the time at the end of every day to write down three things that were good about your day and one thing you want to improve for tomorrow. This allows you to actively seek out the positives of your day. So think about how each thing made you feel. Did it make you feel happy, inspired? Um, did it make you feel proud? So I've got a little bit of an example it's really simple. One, I ran quicker than I did last week. This made me feel proud of my progress. Two, I helped cook dinner tonight. This made me feel happy because I helped my parents. Three, I finished the book I'd been reading. I really enjoyed the ending. And the one thing I want to do tomorrow is tomorrow I want to try and complete my S&C challenge quicker than I did last week. Making it visual. So... Post your goals up somewhere you can see them every day. A lot of the time, um, humans respond really, really well to visually seeing things. So post-it notes on the walls, notes on the fridge, screensaver on your phone. The way you would make mind maps when you do revision and put them up and post-it notes with facts and figures and formulas, it's the same thing. Your goals are something that you need to be able to see every day to keep them on your mind. Find creative ways to make your goals visual. So the one I've gone for here is the pillars. So I've got my main goal at the top, which is my roof. So that's to improve my leg kick. And then I've got my four pillars underneath. So I've got improving my flexibility, running five kilometers in under 25 minutes, improving my jump height, and using visualization once a day. And these four things are the things I'm gonna do during my week that will help me stay on track to my main goal to improve my leg kick. So setting quarantine goals. So I'm just going to talk a bit now about how we go about doing this. It's a little bit of a brief introduction to SMART goals, but I'm not going to cover it in too much detail because we have got a talk on goal setting um, in the future. So I'm just going to give you a little bit to get started with. So some of your goals may be subjective goals. This means that they are based on how you feel. Therefore, only you can decide whether you have had achieved them. So it might be, I want to do my best and have fun. The majority of them will be objective. So obtaining a certain standard in a task or achieving a specific time. So complete this challenge in under 10 minutes, achieve a PB in my running. The first thing you need to establish, so if we're looking at this as it's my pillar diagram, this would be the bottom, so your foundation is your career goal, the ultimate goal that you want to achieve with your swimming. Could be you want to get to the Olympics, you want to win a gold medal at nationals, you want to get your British champs time. That is your foundation. Your foundation then leads you to your process goals. These are the little things that help you achieve your main goal. They focus on key skills you need to execute well. These are your pillars. Your pillars and then holding up your outcome goal, which is the main thing you want to achieve, and this is your roof. So improving your leg kick in a race. For these quarantine goals, they need to be specific. What exactly is it you want to achieve? So... In this scenario, you would tell someone to hold plank for two minutes to be their goal rather than I just simply want to improve my plank. Being more specific will be more effective in keeping you on track to reach your goals. Time. You need to give yourself a time frame that you want to achieve this by. <clears throat> so, for example, I want to achieve this by the 28th of April rather than in a few weeks. This will increase your drive to complete your goal within the time frame and will give you a little bit more motivation to get it done rather than allowing yourself to slack. Achievable. Set goals that challenge you but also make sure they are able to be achieved and make sure you're realistic with your timeframes. 
this will make it more easy to keep motivated because you won't talk yourself out of doing it. Okay. If you are someone who gets overwhelmed with large goals, if you're someone who has this big goal, big dream in front of them, but that really freaks you out and it scares you and you can't stay motivated, then break it down. Break down what you're trying to do into small manageable steps. What does each step look like? When I first started to run during the, this uh, lockdown, I found it really hard to, my goal was to do five kilometers and I went out for the first time, for step one, and I only ran two. And I just, I got bogged down because I was trying to focus on the future steps rather than focusing on one step at a time. So make sure you're focusing on the first step before you move on to the next one. So my first step was just to get out to run. The second step would be get out and run two kilometers, get out and run three kilometers. The future steps shouldn't distract you from what you're doing now. And lastly, have fun. How can you adapt what you are doing to make it more interesting and enjoyable if you're struggling with it? If you do this, then you'll be able to be more motivated to do it and will enjoy it more. But ultimately, be grateful that you are able to keep active and enjoy what you are doing. Okay, so. Okay, so that is the end of my presentation. I'm just going to have a look at the comments. All right, at the moment, it doesn't look like I've got any questions. So I'm going to leave it there. But make sure you tune into Kate's talk on Wednesday. She's doing another nutrition talk. And my next talk on next Monday, which I think is setting up a swimming pool free routine. Um, yeah, so tune in. If you have any questions, like I said at the beginning, send them to gcscquestions at gmail.com. Um, I hope you'll enjoy that video and I hope it was quite useful to you. Please give me any feedback um, if you want anything to change in the presentations. I'm talking too quickly, etc. etc. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you next Monday. Thank you very much.